We thank you, Father, that you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, and power, and sound man. We welcome those that are listening by YouTube, our live stream on YouTube, and, and also on Facebook, and we certainly do welcome you here. Um, one of the things that I really want us to talk about is, again and again, listen, um, when oftentimes when I, when I say things like this, people might misunderstand, and, and I say, listen, we can't, we can't really walk around in total fear. Um, the, thing about, the thing about fear is that um, you can, doesn't matter who you are, you can be easily manipulated through fear. And so what we don't want to do is we don't want to find ourselves in a place that we're so burdened by fear that we're not really standing and trusting God. I mean, the, the scripture tells us to fear to fear God, have a reverential awe of God. But I want us to look at a scripture because um, some of the, some of the, of, of course, you need, you, need to, you need to do some of your own research and, and that kind of thing. And, um, but, but some of the information that we're looking at, we're, we're finding out that much of the information that was presented was exaggerated. So we put the entire nation in a, a panic with bogus information. Um, uh, some, some, some doctors are coming out and saying, well, you know, this is not how uh, things should be done. And, 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 and some are saying, listen, you know, it's a difference between dying with something and dying from something. I mean, that's, you know, you know in other words, if somebody has a, a, a major health issue and then come to find out they were exposed to uh, COVID-19, they're saying the cause of death is COVID-19. And really, they, and, and if I say this, it sounds like I'm being callous and, and insensitive, and that's not my point. It's just that we have to be mindful that oftentimes fear can be used to manipulate and get you and I in position. So God doesn't want us to be in fear. And so I want you to understand that God is a God that wants to bless us. He wants to heal us. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to heal the land. And, and part of that's going to be us turning back into him. But I want to share something in a passage of scripture that I saw, and I kind of, uh, I remembered it right before I, I came up here to share. And so I was looking it up on my, looking it up on my phone, in case what I was looking at. Uh, I was looking it up on my telephone, and I thought, yeah, that's, a, that's something that I want to I share. Turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah 47. Now, I'm going to get back to some other things, but I want to share this as a preamble, if you were, an introduction to what I want to share with, with us today, because I think this is so important. Um, when, the, when, the, when the people, uh, uh, um, I did say Genesis, didn't I? I didn't mean to say Isaiah. I mean, as soon as I turned it, uh, Genesis 47, Genesis 47, 13. And so as, as soon as um, I was about ready to, to, to get, get right here and, and, and minister this, 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 this dropped in my heart to share with you. And so that, so that we, we don't need to be foolish. We don't need to be reckless. But at the same time, we don't need to be overwhelmed with fear. Whenever a people are stirred in fear, uh, they can be manipulated. And when people are manipulated in, in fear, then, then what can happen is, um, if we're not careful, we can sell out our freedom and sell out our ability to live in a free nation for the elusive safety. And um, you, you and I, we do not want to put our future and our lives in the hands of mere fallen men. Mere fallen men are corrupted by so many different things. It, it, yeah, money is one of them, but that's not the only thing. There's other things that can cause people to, to, to be corrupted or corruptible or, or be tempted to do that which is wrong and that which is evil. And so we, we're not going to get into uh, all of the details of that, but I want to share this with you. So, so the people were going through a famine. And so... As they're going through this famine, I want you to take a, a notice of some of the things that they said. Again, what I, I want us to make sure that we don't get so caught up in all that we're hearing 
and not paying attention and not thinking for ourselves sometimes that we become overcome with fear. And uh, I know one of the things that I learned as a, as a, as a, as a little boy, uh, you know, running through the woods and playing in the woods, sometimes a fear can make you hurt yourself. Uh, you know, I, I, I can think of times, you know, you, you're in the woods and you look and you, you see a snake and, you know, if you're not careful, you're running so fast, you run into a tree and, 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 and hurt yourself, knock yourself out. And, uh, you know, I, I never knocked myself out, came close. But, but the point I'm saying is that if, you're not, if we're not careful, fear can put us in a place where we're easily manipulated. Fear not is what God says. Now, we, we have a, a sense of fear before the Lord. He said, fear the Lord. That means have a reverential awe. But we're not talking about having a reverential awe. We're talking about here being terrified. And, and, and it appears that many are, are, are presenting some of this information to stir and fan the flames of hysteria. And so when you, when you find yourself in that kind of situation, we find ourselves in that kind of situation, we need to, we need to uh, seek the Lord. And I, I find it so interesting that the one place we need to be, we're being told that we can't be. And so anyway, uh, Genesis 47, 13, I want to read this to you. It says, and there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they brought, which they bought. And Joseph brought the money unto Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence. Now, I want you to get a hold of something right here. It, it wasn't just that they had a famine. They, they did have a famine, but they had an economic crisis. They had a collapse, it appeared, of the economy. And so when you have a collapse of the economy, then you can stir fear. And then people will do things that they normally would not do simply because they're terrified. I mean, the basic foundation for all fear, my daughter and I were talking about this last night. Um, and, and, you know, people, we're afraid to die, bottom line. All fear has its basis in the fear of death. And, and, and none of us are walking around out here, you know, big, bad, bold, and, you know, all of this crazy stuff. No, we're trusting God. But to trust God requires faith. Request, well, to trust God requires that we fear not. Again and again, when an angel would appear to somebody in the biblical time, the first thing the angel would say to the man or the woman that they appeared to, they said, fear not, fear not, fear not. So let's just continue here. He said, um, oh, okay. I got, a, got to the wrong verse, and I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, it's 15th verse. And when money failed, in other words, an economic collapse, in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money failed. And, jo and Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle, if money fails. So the money, the money system had failed. It was an economic crisis. We're looking at something that if we continue along this path of, 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 a, of a lockdown, or whether it's forced or suggested, I think some of the leaders are starting to put teeth in it and, and all of those kind of things, we're going to find ourselves where the economy could potentially fail. Now, when the economy fails, see, it's not just enough that we're running scared, we're terrified of coronavirus. And, and, and this is one of the things, now listen to me, I'm, 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 not, a, I'm not a doctor and, and, and not trained in any of this uh, biochemical type things, but, but, I, but I can read. I did learn how to read in the first grade. And so some of the things that I've read have informed me that the numbers were exaggerated. Now what does that tell me? If numbers are exaggerated, that, that tells me, it should tell you as well, that there's something afoot. This, this is not simply about protecting the American people. There's some other things going on to stir the fear. And so if this continues and the, and the money fails, the economic system collapses, well, we're already finding ourselves in a place where people are now, people are now sitting around waiting for checks from, from, from the government. We're 
waiting patiently for our check from the government. We said, okay, we should get our 1,200, our 2,400, our 3,000, our work. We should be getting that in just a minute. Now, I don't have a problem with, uh, because, because this lockdown uh, seemed to have been forced on people. It wasn't something that, that people uh, did through laziness or whatever. It seemed to be forced on people to generate fear. And God's telling us to fear not. But the purpose of it is, and I'm just giving you what I see, the purpose of it is to get us in great, greater fear. By doing what? Bringing about a collapse to the economy. And what happens when you get in a collapse, get a collapse in the economy? Joseph said, now here's Joseph. Now, you know, Joseph is a great hero. But Joseph, you know, some of you are not going to like what I'm about to say, but Joseph works for Pharaoh. Joseph was a hero. Joseph was a great ruler. We've all looked at the life of Joseph and taken great um, uh, uh, courage and great inspiration from the life of Joseph. He was portrayed by his brothers, and yet and still, he was still faithful unto God, and God promoted him in the household of his master. Then he was, uh, then he was relied on by, by, by Potiphar's wife, and then he was thrown into prison innocently. And even then, the favor of God, because his faithfulness to God, Continued, he was a faithful man, and God and, and, the, and the warden put him in charge of the prison. And then he and then he moved and operated in his gifts and revealed that that the, uh, the, the fate of the book the, the butcher and the baker. And then he was still forgotten for a few more years. And finally, he's out. And we, we man, we look at we look at Joseph as a great hero. But here is something I want you to understand that Joseph did that. You know, you just got to be careful. When fear, now, in, in during that time of the famine, it was a genuine famine. It was a genuine time of lack. But you need to understand that we just came from record numbers in our economy. And now the economy has been brought down by accelerated and, and, exacer and, 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 and exaggerated numbers by the World Health Organization and by sometimes the things that are coming from the CDC and some of these other people that are moving and operating and so forth. For what purpose? What purpose and why? Some are saying, listen, this should go out another six months or 12 months so we can collapse the economy. They could care, in my opinion, these people don't care about you and I. They don't care about whether we live or die. They want power. Now, here's what happens. Joseph said this. He said, Give your cattle, and I will give for you your cattle if money fails. What were they asking for? They wanted bread. They said, listen, there's a great famine. We don't have any food. We're not able to grow anything. We can't grow anything. And our money is failing. The economy, the economic system has failed. And look at the 17th verse. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for flocks. And for cattle, and for the uh, donkeys, and he fed them with bread for all their cattle that year. <coughs> and when that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, "We will not hide it from my lord." Now. <coughs> Got a little scratchy throat. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Forgive me now. And so, and so they went. They went their way. That year ended. They'd uh, eaten up all the bread. Now they don't have any cattle. They got rid of the horses, the flocks. The cattle, the donkeys, and when that year was in, they came the second year and said unto him, we will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also hath our herds of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our land. They didn't have anything left but their bodies or their la and their land. Wherefore, shall we die before thine eyes, both we and our land, by us. Now, again, I, I told you, 
I, 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 got, I, I got to point this out to you because, because we see Joseph as a hero. And Joseph was, in fact, a hero, a man of great faith. But the people came to him and said, listen, by us, by us, by us, by us, what? And our land for bread. And we and our land, and our, listen, we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Now, I want you to get this word servant, and I want you to go ahead and put a little, if you, if you, don't, if you, now if you don't like writing in your Bible, don't worry about it, but if you don't mind writing in your Bible, write out, just scratch out servant and put slave. Just, just write that. See, you got to understand the danger of fear. Fear of what? Dying will cause you and I to embrace ideas and concepts that will make slaves of us all. Our land will be servants unto Pharaoh and give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph, huh? Bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For the Egyptians sold every man his field because the famine prevailed over them so the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt even to the other. Only the land of the priest bought he not. For the priest had a portion assigned them of Pharaoh and did eat their portion which Pharaoh gave them, wherefore they sold not their land. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Let lo, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. Now I want you to get a see, you gotta get a hold of this thing right here. When the people got into fear, when they got to the place that they feared their circumstances more than they feared God, they sold themselves into slavery. We live in a country that's based on the Constitution, the great Bill of Rights. We have a right to freedom of speech. We have a right to freedom of religion and Congress. And that should extend to every, 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 every other legislative body or a lawmaking body can make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion, our Christian faith. And yet we find ourselves, because of fear, willing to give that up. Now, you, you say, well, no, no, you, you're just going off a completely different direction. I'm just telling you something that I'm, I'm old enough to realize that human beings will be human beings no matter how sophisticated we become, how much education we come, there's something about embracing fear that will cause us to do the absolute unthinkable. And there are those, they want this. Why would they want it? To enslave us all. I know, I know. Some people say, oh, no, you just, uh, you just a uh, conspiracy theorist. I mean, it's not a conspiracy. It's not, it's not a theory if they really are out to get you. <laughs> it becomes an agenda then. It becomes an agenda. So you say, now, well, preacher, what's this got to do with healing school? Here's what it has to do with healing school. The Bible says for us to fear not. To fear not. Now, the governor and those in authority have given us some instruction. Do not have more than 10. Make sure that we practice social distancing. Be six feet or more away from people. And that's probably a good idea, especially when somebody's preaching and stuff is going there. You know, it's probably a good idea. And we're abiding by that. But we need to make sure that we are paying attention to what's going on. Don't just get one side of an issue. Sometimes you've got to look at both sides of the issue. And the truth sometimes is somewhere in between. Sometimes it's someplace else. Listen. When people, the reason, the reason that governments want to take away freedom is so that they can rule with an iron rod. 
so they can tell you what time to get up, what time to go to bed, what to eat, why to eat it. I mean, think about this. Some people, somebody already floated the idea that we're going to have a, a, a bio, a bio, a biomedical arm badge test, letting you know whether or not you uh, have been tested. Did you know that some of the tests were faulty? Did you know that a lot of the tests, if you didn't have it, you'd get it after you got the test? So imagine that. Faulty tests, tests that are contaminated with the virus. Man, it was about pushing fear. Now, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. You don't have to believe a thing that I'm saying. But you got a big old computer. Most of us, we walk around with these super duper computers in our pockets, and we use them only to, to listen to jokes and all of that foolishness. We need to we need we need to dig up some stuff and not just what and not just listening to the people that you want to listen to. Sometimes if we're not careful, we just listen to, to those we want to hear. You might need to look on the other side. Sometimes when I look at things a little bit different and somebody has a different thing, I have to go over there and look and see what it is they're saying, make sure I'm not missing something. Fear not. That's what the Bible says, fear not. Yet we look around and we're terrified. Old death. What did the Bible ask us? Where's your victory? Where's your sting? See, when you and I as Christians, listen, we're not walking around talking about having some kind of perverted death wish. No, no. We don't have a death wish. But we understand when we leave here, when we slip out of our bodies here, we're going to be with our Lord. We believe that. We, we preach that. The Bible teaches that. But while we're here, we got a job to do. And part of our job is telling the truth. We need to pay attention to what's going on. I know we all have our favorite politicians. Some like this president, others like that president, some like this legislator, some others like that legislator. How about falling in love with the truth? How about digging around and checking some things out? How about that? Because if we're not careful, we can find ourselves right here where a hero of ours can sell us into slavery. Hear me now. And they came and asked for slavery. I just read it to you. They came and asked for it. There are going to be people that they're going to ask for slavery. I'm not asking for slavery. I don't want slavery. I want the right to say what I want to say when I want to say it. And I want the right to defend that right. I want the right to keep and bear arms. So if somebody want to tell me to shut up by force, I can have an equalizer to make sure I can still speak what I believe is true and what I believe is right. That's what every one of us should want. I know you may, see, because if you're not careful, you may look and say, well, since I disagree with this or I disagree with that, then I don't want them to have that right. But what you don't understand is the right applies to all of us. If we limit the right, then the limitation is to all of us. The doorway, the pathway, the slippery slope of slavery. You know, we can call it socialism. We can call it communism. We can call it dictatorship of the uh, uh, proletariat. We can call it all of that. But it's nothing short of absolute slavery. And here's the thing about it. These people right here, these Israelites voluntarily asked to be enslaved because of fear. They were terrified. Now, why in the world would you go through all of that, Pastor? Because what I want to talk to you about today, let me flip over here and get to my, you see, you and I have a responsibility to bring light to the world. We're, we're supposed to bring salt. That's not a metaphor. That's not, that's not simply a metaphor for you and I to look at and talk about and ignore. It's a metaphor for us to use and apply to real life situations. You see, if we're not careful, 
and I could be just as guilty of it as anybody else, we can reduce our preaching to nothing more than beautiful and eloquent words. I mean, have you ever listened to somebody speak and say, oh, man, ooh, that's good. Ooh, that, oh, that was nice how they put that together. It doesn't mean a thing if it's not something we can apply. It doesn't mean a thing if it's not something we can act on right now today. Why am I bringing this? Well, the scripture says that we're supposed to be speaking the truth in love. Turn me in your Bible to Ephesians 4.11. I remember uh, years ago, I saw a bumper sticker. And it was a nice bumper sticker. And it said, speak truth to power. And yet, and still, I look around, and I find that so many people that have that bumper sticker, they never speak truth to power unless it's a power they don't agree with. If they're Republican, and they're the Republican authority, they don't have nothing to say. If it's a Democrat, and there's a, a, a Democrat in, in authority, they don't have nothing to say. As long as it's their team, ain't nobody speaking truth to power. No. They don't speak. See, see what it is is that we, we get this idea where, where, where we speak truth to selective power. If it's the power that we support, they can go on and do whatever and be corrupt, lie, cheat, and steal, and, and promise us something and have no intentions of doing it, and we just signed off on it. Well, I'll tell you the truth about it. If that's how I was going to do, just go on and turn in my preacher badge and quit preaching. But that's not how I'm going to do it. Here's what it says in Ephesians 4. 11, it said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Isn't it something? We've got so many schisms and nisms in the body of Christ. We cannot come into the unity of the body of Christ, and the reason primarily is because we do not preach and teach a consistent word. See, we get divided. We got liberal Christians that don't receive from so-called conservative Christians. Christians. We've got conservative Christians that don't receive from so-called liberal Christians. Because the lens through which we look at the word of God many times, the lens through which we see the truth is not through the word of God many times. It's through our political affiliation. So if our political affiliation tell us to be fearful, then we go in fear. If our political affiliation tell us to be angry, then we're angry. If our political affiliation tell us rejoice and shout over it, we'll rejoice and shout over it. Oh, oh, or we just won't say anything. And God's saying that we, those of us that are called to proclaim and preach and teach the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, we are to speak the truth we're supposed to do it in love now. What does that mean? That means that we're not trying to condemn anybody permanently. We're not trying to throw anybody away permanently. We're not trying to say there's no hope, there's a, it's a lost cause for anybody. We're saying this is the truth, hear ye it, and, and, and comport yourself with what you've heard. And yet we find ourselves many times punking right out, cowards. We become moral cowards. I can, I can think about Martin Luther King. Say, so you're not supposed to be marching. You don't have a permission to march, and you don't have permission to lead this. But he went right on and did it anyway because he has the courage of his convictions to stand against lies and stand against injustice against injustices. And today, we want to make sure we get our check. 
Now don't misunderstand me. A check roll over my mailbox. I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to praise the Lord and keep it moving. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But, I'm, but, but, but if I got a compromise to get it, they can keep it. I trust God. Huh? You see, you see, I am so amazed. I hear people talking about morality and high morals and then supporting things that according to the Bible, the word of God, the, 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 the format and the plan for how we should be living are actually moral decadent. Now, I, I don't have an issue with those that say I'm not a Christian per se. I don't have a problem with those that said I don't really believe that as you say it. But if you name Jesus as Lord, you are without excuse. Leading people to fear. What purpose? The purpose is that we come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, a mature, mature Christian, a mature man, a mature woman. The fullness, the statue of Christ. And yet, look, us, look around. We're cowering and hiding. It amazes me. I, 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 just, uh, I, I just find it fascinating. And, and, and uh, all, all across the nation, I think we've got at least two high-profile ministers that said, by God, I'm preaching the word of God. And many of us as Christians, we couldn't wait to jump on a bandwagon and call them all kind of fools and idiots and this and that and the third while we cower. And the edict of Pharaoh and sell our people into slavery. Just as Joseph did. You see, how did this happen? When people are fearful, they'll ask for anything. When people are fearful, we have a responsibility of that fivefold ministry gift to stand up and sound the alarm. For God I'll live, but for God I'll die. And I plan on living and giving God the glory. I will not bow. I'm held captive by my conviction. When I think about what God is doing, and I think about what God is calling us to, if you're going to stay home, you better be praying. Don't just stay home, eat up all the food in the refrigerator, watch television, and I mean, you can do that, but pray. Spend some time in the Word. Spend some time getting clarity about what you're supposed to be doing before God. Don't just stay home. We're just waiting. We're just waiting, Lord. Bless us, Lord. We're so terrified. Now, listen to me. I'm not insensitive to those that have contracted the disease and die. Any more than I'm insensitive to those that get any disease and die. Because I come to church, because I preach the word of God, doesn't mean that I'm insensitive to somebody that died of the flu before we heard of COVID. That died of pneumonia before we heard of COVID. That unfortunately may have been killed in an accident, accident automobile accident, or even any accident. Our heart breaks. But isn't it interesting that we didn't go into full meltdown panic because of it? We need to grab a hold of ourselves. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But fear comes that same way too. Be careful how you hear. Be careful what you hear. Or you'll be terrified. You'll be running, scared. I remember 
Somebody said to me, well, you believe in healing. Why don't you just go empty the hospital? Well, Jesus didn't empty the hospitals. Go read it. I'll give you, I'll give you a homework assignment. Go read up about the porch of Bethesda. I'll just give you a little hint. Jesus walked up on the porch. People were waiting for the miracle. When the angel stirred the water, Jesus ministered to one person, got him healed, walked on off the porch and went on about his business. You say, well, what in the world? Well, that just lets you know something. It's not always what you and I think it is. There's some other reasons. There's other things going on. And I'm here to tell you that we've got to trust God. God is a healer, and he's still healing. Let's thank God for the doctors. We thank God for the clinicians. We thank God for the nurses, for nurses' aides. We thank God for all those in health care. We thank God for every one of them. They can keep you here when disease is trying to take you out. But I tell you what, Jesus is still the healer. He's still in the healing business. Not long ago, saw something on Facebook, and somebody said, well, you know, people are going to wait until they come up with some medicine, and then they're going to say, thank God. They were being very cynical. But I tell you what, you better thank God if somebody comes up with some medicine. I just heard that one guy, the hydrochloroquine, uh, he, he took that, and I think it was 12 to 18 hours later, he had no symptoms. Now, why in the world would the media tell us that it's too dangerous? I mean, okay, I'm not saying there are not some side effects, but side effects of a, of a treatment with zinc is a whole lot better than being dead, isn't it? And we know within the church world, we don't hardly believe in laying hands on the sick anymore. We got to spend so much time talking ourselves out of the unbelief that we've learned. Even right now, some of you are looking and thinking certain things. It's all right. God is still a healer. He can use a doctor. He can use a dummy. I ain't no doctor, so I guess that makes me, well, anyhow, I don't have a problem with it. See, because, because as we're moving forward in, the, in some things, we don't want to get full of pride. We don't want to get to the place that we think that we're all that and got everything figured out. None of us has this all figured out. But I tell you what I do have figured out. I can trust God. I will trust God. He is a healer. Now, I said a lot of things that I, I, you know, I, I hadn't planned on saying. But you see, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I want you to understand something. The Bible tells us that we have authority over sickness and disease. Now, we, we don't really believe it. We're like, the, we're like the man that came to Jesus and said, I believe, help, my, help thou my unbelief. See, because we can, we can talk and then in our, in our heart of hearts still be in fear. We, we, we can mouth the words that we've heard and still be full of fear. The only way to get that out is we got to hear more of the word of God. Just got to keep hearing the word of God. Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes ye were healed. Matthew 8, 17, by his stripes ye were healed. I think it's 1 Peter 2, 24. By his stripes, you were healed. You say, wait a minute now. What about people that said they were believing and died? Well, not to say they weren't in faith, but obviously they hadn't been in faith long enough. Their faith wasn't strong enough. The Bible talks about Abraham did not stagger in faith because he had strong faith. Well, if he had strong faith, you could have weak faith. So how do you get, how do you get strong faith? Well, you got to hear the word and you got to act on what you heard. Let's just be honest. Most of us haven't acted on of, of half of what we've heard. Let's just be honest. We just haven't. Because, because we live in such a blessed nation that, that normally, normally we don't have problems with things like this. We don't normally don't have to trust God if we get a cold or get something or get a diagnosis. We go to the doctor, they give us something. We live in such a blessed time. 
And so now that we're being terrified with the pandemic, a planned pandemic, pandemic, some would say. We know we haven't had to walk by faith. Many people got a good job. They ain't got to walk by faith for their finances. Many people never been sick a day in their life. They've never had to walk by faith for their healing. Many people have, have, have been blessed because they come from certain families or whatever. Finances, family life, and so forth and so on. That's just the blessing of the Lord. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not belittling that. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to, to make a mockery of that and say this less or less, but I'm telling you what, until you until you can't go and put your hands on it yourself in the natural, that's when you find out whether or not you really walk by faith. Will you trust the Lord? Anyhow. Well, that's why I said earlier, we 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 look at Joseph and call him a hero. He had to trust God when he was thrown in that well. He had to trust God when he was sold into slavery. He had to trust God. We got to trust God. We must trust God. Fear not. I want to close with this passage of scripture. Turn to me in your Bibles real quickly. I shared a whole lot more uh, away from my notes than I intended to, but be encouraged. Psalm 91, we're going to read that entire chapter, 1 through 16. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Blessed be the name of the Lord and the reading of his word. We just thank all of you for listening to our live stream, our healing school live stream. I just want to encourage you, part of healing is staying out of fear, staying in be encouraged. Father, I just pray your blessings upon those that are receiving this message today. I pray, God, that you would touch every heart. Each one turn to serve you. For we know that no man shall enter the kingdom of God except he be born again. Those of you that are listening, if you're not born again, you need to be born again. Those of you that are maybe operating in fear, you've been terrified by the news. Well, just meditate on Psalm 91. Turn your heart toward God. Trust him to keep you and strengthen you. If you have to go to a doctor, go to one. Don't try to prove how strong your faith is and die. Live so you can take an opportunity to strengthen your faith while you're alive. 
be encouraged. The God we serve is a mighty God. He's bigger than it, this that we're going through as a nation, whatever it is. Doesn't appear that it, what it looks like on the surface. There's some other things. But he's able to get this nation through this. We need to turn to him and trust him. Father, I just pray you bless each and every one. Strengthen our resolve to serve you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.